Blender 3.0, a new big release. But as with each new release, it's a blessing and a curse. Should I switch right now or stick to the old version and wait for the next bug fix releases to make it a little bit more polished? Is all the hype true? I will show you three big features that should ease your doubts and make you want to switch to 3.0 immediately. Wait, 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 hold your horses. I wouldn't hurry that much. There are definitely caveats. Stick to the end of the video and you might see which one of us is right. Let's roll with the first one. Geometry nodes. The thing that already appeared in the older version of Blender, but right now it's revamped with a lot of new nodes added. You can find a complete list in the official Blender documentation. Curved nodes, curved primitive nodes, string nodes for text manipulations, just to name a few. To see the full potential of it, you can watch Blender Studio's live streams with Simon Toms that showcase practical use of geometry nodes. This new release also introduces the new concept of fields, and to get a really good explanation of that, you can watch Arendelle's video, the link will be in the video description, and you can also listen to our interview with Arendelle, who is right now turning into a real professor of proceduralism. Proceduralism is like a gimmick, a kind of a show-off to make useless shaders, like what we're doing for a lot of the vector displacement for November. Speaking about November, last month Twitter was full of artists doing crazy stuff with like Blender is C, who's made a procedural castle generator, pigeon generator, and even some cool spaceships reacting to objects with the proximity node. A big shout out to another node magician, BBBN192, who also made some cool looking creatures. Just look at those gross worms reacting to the surface, made by Z Guerrero. Looks like Blender is trying to challenge Houdini. Cycles X. Cycles rendering engine has been rewritten from scratch with numerous improvements which made its GPU performance skyrocket. As you can see in the graphs shown, there are hair shadow improvements and a new distance scrambling aka micro jitter feature. I will show you my little test to check whether the speed difference is really that fast. A simple bloody donut scene I made in Blender, here it's running with a Blender 2.93. And here's the Cycles X 3.0 version. And it's run on Nvidia 1080 Ti. You can see the new version just crushes, it's literally double times as fast. But what about the AMD users? There's a ray of hope as well. AMD has announced an HAP basic support for the 3.0 version, which is going to be developed in the future versions for older equipment as well, and it's already planned for the 3.1 release. Right now it's just supporting RDNA and RDNA2 generations, but what about the CPU performance? I was really curious and made the test with my double Xeon 5056 and run the same donut on my CPU and unfortunately, the old version ran better on the two CPU multi-threaded setup. The third one is the asset browser. Finally, a nice way of handling uh, multiple assets in Blender. You can access it in a new window, setting it up as an asset browser, and each object or material that you mark as an asset is added to the browser. You can organize them in catalogs, tag them, drag and drop them. You can also save them as libraries to access for your future projects. Here in the preferences, you can set up and name your multiple libraries that you are going to use. And the cool new feature that's connected to the asset browser is the pose library. Now you can easily save poses for parts of your rig and apply them with a single click. You can also pose the whole armature and save this. Just remember that the thumbnail is created from the current active camera position. So set it up correctly and right now, that's more like it. And the really cool, cool feature that the pose library introduces is that you can click and drag mouse over the thumb of the pose and it will apply it gradually so you can apply the pose in just a tiny percent or to the full extent. Doesn't that make you smile? 